security placed on full alert as heads of state descend in Manila for the APEC summit. First to arrive is Chilean President Michelle Bachelet. France drops bombs on Islamic State's base in Syria as the manhunt for those behind the Paris attacks continues. APEC then and now will talk to former President Fidel V. Ramos on hosting the summit, national security, China and more. Good morning, you're watching First Up Philippines. I'm Jean De Castro. Equities and currency futures all down after the Paris terror attacks over the weekend. JP Ong has more for us downstairs. Yes, G, in a grim weekend indeed, as we have to keep in mind also that the attacks in Paris follow a day after Thursday's horrific bomb, suicide bomb, bomb blasts in Lebanon that left 40 dead. Now, equities across the world from the S&P to the Nikkei and Hang Seng expected to open lower as Monday begins. It's all pretty much in the red. Now, now the Nikkei, Chinese, Australian, Hong Kong equities all down. Um, the Nikkei 225 and the ASX futures both expected to trade lower as both markets prepare to come online in the next hour. Let's take a quick look though at futures for the major indices last Friday and recall that the attacks happened between 9 and 10 p.m. Central European time or about 4 p.m. in New York just before the end of the training. And at 4 p.m. New York time we started to see equity futures uh, to fall as news of the Paris attacks started coming in. The S&P 500 futures now at about two, just over 2,000 level and the stocks Euro 600 which tracks the 600 largest stocks in the Eurozone also fell as expected. The Nikkei 225 falling about a percent of trading in Chicago Merc in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange also down about a percent and this is at the tone for today. Now we're also starting to say, see a move to safe haven investments. The dollar is strengthened as expected against all major currencies as investors flock to the greenback but also the, the Japanese yen. Now the Japanese yen in Tokyo has already started to strengthen now trading at about 122 spot 39 versus the dollar. This is about 0.4% 0 .4, 0 .4, um, yen lower than lower, stronger than before and remember and also to be a short term risk risk on environment could dampen emerging markets including the Philippines. Back up to you guys. France has launched an airstrike against the ISIS held Syrian city of Raqqa in response to the deadly attacks in Paris. Ten French fighter jets reportedly dropped 20 bombs on Raqqa, hitting the ISIS command center. An international manhunt is also underway for a Belgian-born suspect linked to the carnage that killed 129 people and injured 349. Various world leaders immediately came out to condemn the violent attacks and express solidarity with France. The Pope says the attacks were part of a piecemeal World War III, and United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon called the attacks despicable. U.S. President Barack Obama vowed to provide whatever assistance France needs to respond. Here in the Philippines, President Noy Noy Aquino recalled that France had come to the aid of the Philippines in the wake of Typhoon Haiyan. So the Philippines stands now with France in the firm belief that the light must never dim in Paris. Michelle Bachelet is the first world leader to arrive in Manila for APEC. The Chilean president is said to have bilateral talks with President Aquino ahead of the World Leaders Summit on Wednesday. President Aquino convened his security cluster on Saturday to double-check on APEC preparations, hours after the attacks in Paris. So far, no world leader has cancelled attendance at the APEC since the attacks. Security forces were placed on full alert. Nag-alerto uh, tayo ng konti at in-remind natin yung mga commanders na hindi tayo pwede mag-relax although napakalayo naman nung pinangyarihan doon sa France pero pinaghanda rin namin sila at in-remind namin sila lagi nandito na ang karamihan ng puwersa kaya kailangan din mag -ano sila, maging alerto sila doon sa mga istasyon nila at kanilang lugar. Almost 20 years since the Philippines first hosted the APEC summit, and activist groups are preparing to sing a familiar refrain. Bimbo Santos has the story. As the Philippines again hosts the APEC summit, militant activists are dusting off the same left-wing rhetoric that lambasted the previous meeting in Manila nearly two decades ago, the so-called anti-poor policies of the trade group. There is a better way of doing things. No? There is a better world. No? Na hindi kinakailangan ang isang klaseng a balangkas ng ekonomiya na yung mayaman, lalong yung mayaman at lumalaki yung agwat ng mayayaman sa mahihirap. As they did in 1996, protest mainstay bayan scored the cost of hosting the summit. Yun, yun yung medyo tragic dito, eh, no? na uh, after 19 years, no? yung ipinangako sa atin dati, hindi pa rin talaga nakamit. No? We're still stuck in that situation. Just as they argued back then, left-wing groups still assert only the bigger countries stand to gain from being part of the APEC. Itong APEC, 
ang may agenda nito yung mga malalaking bansa gaya ng US, China, Australia sila sila yung magbe-benefit dito sa APEC pero yung mga yung mga smaller countries gaya ng Pilipinas uh, at iba pa eh tayo yung gag tayo yung tayo yung dadambungin nito mga to But protest groups did promise one big change. They said thousands will take part in their November 19 demonstration, far exceeding their numbers during the 1996 meet in Subic. Bimbo Santos, Bloomberg TV, Philippines. The Philippines hosted the APEC Summit previously in 1996 to help us compare then and now. Joining us on our studio is no other than former President Fidel Valdez Ramos. Mr. President, the three of us are here and we have a lot of questions to ask you and we don't have that much time. So we'll do it in the form of a speed round. Each of us will ask you a question and you have 30 seconds to answer to answer each of it. So first is Reg. Let me get Please right into it. Please speak louder. Mr. I'm 87 years old. Let me and get you right into it, Mr. President. Your audio. Right. 19 years after we first hosted the summit in Subic, are we where you'd hope we would be? Did the Subic hosting put the city on the map for investors as was the intention? We must look at Subic in terms of Clark and Subic. The two are like twins. And uh, 20 years ago, up to now, they are our best two platforms for economic growth and sustainable development in the sense that that area possesses all the necessary global qualifications for the Philippines to be truly competitive if we are looking at destinations. That's the place. <laughs> All right, fair point. But how far have we come, Mr. President, from then and up to where we are now after 19 years? It's hard for me to make that judgment because I've been out of office for the last 15 years. But you had a lot of comments about the present APEC preparations. Because I'm studying all of these things and I've been there, Clark and Subic, in the last uh, two months. All checking right. on the venues and their capabilities and the uh, attractiveness of their accommodations. And they're world class now, except for... The airport in Subic is not being maintained because the policy of the Philippine government appears to be uh, just uh, keeping it as a concrete pavement after uh, FedEx pulled out. That should not be the case. I saw only light planes touching and taking off in Subic. Mr. But President the promise is the Philippine Air Force on their own with the cooperation of the uh, SBMA, the management, will put up a big fighter component there. And that's good. But uh, it appears that uh, national government policy from Malacanang towards Subic uh, is not that uh, positive anymore. Look, Subic is a gateway. Mr. President, in the middle. going now to the issue of the South China Sea, Mr. President, during your time, right before the APEC in 1996, that was the time that the China went to mischief reef. So that was a big issue during APEC that time. And now we also have an issue with the South China but Sea. But during my time... How should we handle wait, China? During my time, I instructed the West Coast Commander, General Charlie Tanyega. He's still around. You ask him. He's got two stars on his shoulders. You remove all the Chinese-looking signs on our territory, and he did. And if you read the record, and it's there, read the Manila Bulletin of uh, the last four weeks. I said, we arranged a state visit with President Jiang Jimin of China after November 25, 1996. And he came. He stayed. And you even had that uh, video okay thing with We had with bonding. Him. This is okay what is lacking in the government today. And you actually... Uh, in the sense that, eh, kulang ang bonding with the Filipinos, mm. commoners, like you, you, you. Mr. But President. especially with the leaders and the old fogies like myself. 
Mr. I'm not complaining. You insist that we should still continue talks with China. Do you think it would still work after their their aggressive moves in the South China Sea? Look, my dear lady, you must study the future of uh, all the countries in the 21st century. The weapons of mass destruction now are 5,000 times more deadly and damaging than that used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki 70 years ago. You don't need an airplane to deliver the bomb. No. You just <laughs> press the button. Some crazy guy might do that. Maybe from the north somewhere. I'm not mentioning the name. <laughs> Mr. But there's a second strike policy on the part of the Pentagon. And as soon as they detect that missile going into Hawaii, they're pressing the button in the White House. And some capital, much bigger, might get obliterated. Right. Mr. President. But then there is a counter, 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 counter strike ad infinitum. All right. right. Now, Jason, so right. nobody you have a wants question, World Jay. War III no. because it will wipe you out and you and you. But maybe not me because uh, I'm going to live long. I'm a pacemaker. Mm. Mr. President, apart from nuclear attacks, um, we have to address the issue, security concerns surrounding APEC. Of course, the Department hey, of Foreign Affairs... Hey, speak has slower, it. man. <laughs> Sorry, sir. The Department of Foreign Affairs has said that they are prepared, uh, that security measures are prepared. However, in light of what's happened in Paris and in Beirut, um, do you think that we need to rethink our security preparations in APEC, given you've also, you were we in charge of the last APEC, sir? We must always be very flexible, especially because this government chose Manila as the venue for the leaders' summit. I chose Subic for obvious reasons. Security is much more easily handled. I was suggesting three years ago, Clark, because that is the twin component of Subic as our economic number one platform. Uh, well, they had some minor meetings there. But in order to fortify my suggestion, I slept uh, Three nights there in Subic in the last two months. Played golf there. Right, Mr. Talked to all the people there. The people are well trained to handle all kinds of uh, top executives. And the executive suite where I stayed is good enough for the Sultan of Brunei today. But we are expecting more delegates this time around as compared to 1996, uh, 19 years ago. Of course, my dear lady, it's only arithmetic. We had a population of 76 million. 25 years ago. We now have 100 million and are still counting. Correct, so, but the question is, can Subic still host, still provide that same kind of security and logistical If they detail? were given the go signal two years ago, instead of uh, fooling around with uh, little places that are prone to super typhoons down there in the south, sure enough, we could have made all the preparations. We are a number one engineering country. I know, I'm a civil engineer with a license to practice. All right, let's Hi, come Mr. Back. President, we now go to EDCA. You had very strong opinions on EDCA. Tell us, why do we need this? No, uh, please remember the background. Mm. It was during your there time. There is a BFA that, VFA. that came out during my time. Yes. It was treated as an executive agreement coming out of the MDT. You know what that means? Yes, the Mutual yeah. Defense, Defense Treaty of 1951. 1951. Ratified mm -hmm. in 1953 by our Senate. Correct. Okay? So, the BFA was one of those exchange agreements. But the next Senate after me, after my time, uh, because that's the way they feel, and the successor president happened to be a senator. I will not mention his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, felt that it had to be ratified. Why should you make your own process harder by a higher ratification when by executive agreement you can adjust according to the changes around you and in the world? Just by the uh, signing of uh, a minister on the part of the Philippine government and an ambassador on the part of the U.S. government. Why make the process so difficult by requiring a ratification? See, but that's the trouble. We are restricting ourselves all Mr. the time, President, binding we, the rules. Why do we need EDCA? Why do we need U.S. here? Will we not just invite because enemies of the U.S. to come here? Because you cannot tackle China alone by yourself. 
Not even one other country can tackle China by itself. It takes the whole world. And what we need now is more international cooperation. Considering the weapons of mass destruction, your enemy, my dear friend, is no longer China, not China, but climate change, global warming, super typhoons, <laughs> pandemic diseases, dengue, right. Right. On that note, polio. On that note, HIV. Mr. President, that's, only, that's, that's all the right. time that we have now. Oh, Thank wait, you very wait. much for joining I us. I have so. not mentioned international terrorism. Of course. And that is so mobile. And they may that's possess right. weapons of mass right. destruction. That's right. And they may be right here in this city. And that really puts that it has into focus what happened in Paris recently. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank Let's you very much, Let's now go too. to David Inglis, who is standing by the Makati Shangri-La. David, how are the preparations going so far? Well, you know, it, it's still quite early, obviously. Um, you know, this is, will be one of the venues uh, of the conference. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the sign behind me. This is where gonna, uh, the CEO summit is going to be held. I mean, and I guess to your point, people are starting to, to, to just trickle in. Uh, you do feel, uh, as if obviously depending if you're a pessimist or an optimist, that, you know, walking into the Shang feels like you're walking into a military fortress. Uh, there's a usual checkpoint when you drive in and, of course, walking in. But, but I mean, that being said, though, and I guess to the point that the former president just made, it's just, I guess, for the lack of a better way to describe, uh, just a bigger headache at uh, hosting it in Manila. I'm sure you guys have been all over this, the preparations. They held a, uh, a mock drill uh, at the PICC, uh, and you had paratroopers coming down from helicopters storming the building. Obviously, a, ma a mock terrorist attack. They, uh, in light of what happened in Paris, they raised the alert level to the highest level. Um, a day earlier, which was really uh, also a matter of protocol uh, when we do have these big international conferences in the city and, of course, in light of, course, of what happened uh, over in Paris. Are they uh, monitoring any sort of specific threat or credible threat? Um, I was reading, reading some of these local reports this morning, um, and you know, the, the sense I got was there was none. Uh, as far as the presence of ISIS uh, here in the Philippines is concerned, uh, little. Uh, if, if any. But that being said, of course, you do want to look over-prepared than being blamed for being under-prepared. And I guess you do have to strike a balance as well between uh, making delegates and visitors feel like the city's under a lockdown and also making them feel welcome. But, but that being said, though, uh, you know, a lot of money went uh, into hosting this event. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, close to 10 billion pesos went uh, into this. Um, it's obviously always up to, uh, up to debate whether or not uh, the economic benefits uh, will outweigh how much they spend. Obviously, the direct benefit from that is the stimulus coming from the spending, the visitors coming in. But obviously, you also have a holiday uh, all throughout this week, uh, and that's sort of output lost as well. But, you know, in some of the people that I've talked to, and we have business leaders coming in, the reason they're coming here, and I'll be speaking to a lot of them over the course of the next few days, is really to understand what makes the Philippines tick? I was here covering uh, the World Economic Forum last year when arguably growth was peaking. We're a little bit obviously so at a softer spot right now. But, you know, we're transitioning into a new government. Uh, there are elections obviously next year and people do want to get a sense of, uh, you know, the continuity of these policies. And uh, you have Jack Ma of Alibaba coming in. You know, I'll be speaking in a few, in about an hour and a half, I'll be speaking to the uh, the Asia-Pacific president of MasterCard. So obviously the agenda has shifted to security and obviously you do feel that security is quite tight. But the original agenda and certainly the talking points will also continue to be, especially on the sidelines, uh, innovation, uh, inclusive growth, all those other things of course and the reason why we're hosting it and the reason why the Philippines obviously is pulling on all the stops is to make sure everything runs hopefully uh, very smoothly and without incident. Jean? Thank you very much, David and Glass, live at the Makati Shangri-La Hotel. Coming up, dollar remittances struggle to grow as the greenback gains ground. And Globe and Smart join forces to gain access to what could potentially be the crown jewel of the wireless broadband industry.